Vegas Rock Dog Radio. Heads. People. Pop culture. Sam, the queen of rock and roll dogs. Hello everyone, I'm Sam, the queen of rock and roll dogs, and you are listening to Vegas Rock Dog Radio, a rock and roll show all about pets, people, and pop culture. I'm live from Las Vegas, and today I'm talking about what to expect at Superdoo. Super do. I already did my first club of the day, Super Zoo, the big pet industry event with pet retail expert, Phil Chang. So stay right there. Vegas Rock Dog Radio. Pets, people, pop culture. Good morning, everyone. Oh, my goodness. Did we start the day off? in a crazy, ma- a crazy manner, and I can't speak. I've already done my first flub-, flub of the day, third flub of the day. Good morning, everyone. I'm Sam, the queen of rock and roll dogs, and you're listening to Vegas Rock Dog Radio. We had a little technical hitch this morning. Oh, and that's why I love live radio and live TV. I don't mind if it goes wrong. We figure it out. <laughs> it gets the adrenaline going, your heart pumping, but we're here and we are ready to have a great show today. So, Jim, um, Good morning. <laughs> Good morning. Is, is that it? Yeah, I have two hands and two eyeballs, and I, I'm all over this computer right now. So, oh my I'm, gosh, uh, trying to get a hold of your guests. So, uh, give me a second. It's to, been a uh, little bit, bit nut, nutty this morning, as they like to say, a little bit nutty. Well, welcome to the show. If you are new to the show, I'm so glad that you're here, and I hope that you uh, walk away from every single show with a uh, little bit of piece of information, or you, oh gosh, I didn't know about this amazing group of people doing things for animals, or we tell you about a new product tons of things that we talk about, but it's all about pets, people, and pop culture. And if you're one of our regulars, well, thank you for being here again. Well, uh, there's an easy way to find us on the internet if you want to connect with us, and that is through our website, vegasrockdogradio.com. You'll see us pop up on Periscope once in a while. And of course, we're on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. We have a blog, and the blog is called the rockandrolldog.com. We have an app, and you will go to yap.us, y-a-p-p.us. Yes, and it's a free app. We love free. So you download the free app, then you download our show on to the app. Really, really easy. And you'll be the first in the know when we put new things up. And of course, if you like to listen at your own leisure, which I think we all really enjoy the whole an on-demand aspect of, uh, of entertainment, then of course, you can go to iTunes, iHeartRadio, Spoke, which is the new app from SiriusXM. Oh, yes, we're on SiriusXM. And if you have another podcasting listening app, podcast listening app, then you'll find us. Just search Vegas Rock Dog Radio. Very easy to find the show and, uh, you know, stay up to date with what we're chit-chit-chatting about. Oh my gosh, I feel like I've run a marathon already because I say... (laughs) Technical, technical. Last couple minutes were a marathon for sure. Oh, I'm but, sweating. Uh, I don't even know why I bothered having a shower now. So, uh, well, because it's way humid outside. It is. Well, it is. Well, it's all relative to where you come from. But for the desert, it's rather humid. And I'm excited because it's monsoon season is about to start. And I love that. I love gardening. So my garden enjoys a good old rain, which we don't have much of it. But yeah, it's certainly, certainly a sticky time. And I think for anyone that's coming into Vegas... You kind of have to prepare for the weather. And there are tons of people that we know coming into Vegas because in a couple of weeks, we have got the biggest pet retailer show coming into Vegas. And I called it Super Do earlier because uh, I have the wrong teeth in clearly today. <laughs> it's called Super Zoo. 
And if you're brand new into the industry, you may not even know about SuperZoo, but it's been going forever and a day. I think we've been going 10 years or so. We're lucky we're down the road from where they hold the uh, show, which is at Mandalay Bay Hotel. And uh, it's a, it's a great, um, gosh, I mean, it's a great show for retailers, brands, influencers that are in the pet world. And each year we some, see some amazing products that pop up. Uh, I get to build some great relationships with lots of people and it's become more and more exciting. What I have noticed um, over the last couple of years are a lot more pet influencers are coming in for the event. It's not very often you would you would see that many bloggers or bloggers that you knew that would be there specifically for the event. So it's been it's been way more exciting, I think, the last couple of years. And when you think about it, retailers and brands and influencers all make sense when they work together. They, they make a lot of sense. And uh, it's going to be a great time for, for tons of people coming in to Vegas for Super Zoo, of course, are going to be there. And one of the most fabulous people that's going to be there, and I get to meet him in the flesh, yes, <laughs> is uh, Phil Chang. He is a retail expert and, of course, a pet retail expert within being a retail expert. And if you've never been to Super Zoo, we're going to talk about what you can expect how you can prepare a little bit and get the most out of these shows. Because I think they're very, they're large shows. It's very easy to get overwhelmed. And if you don't go with a plan or have any idea of what to expect, you can actually, you know, blow it. <laughs> you could really blow a great opportunity to connect with either a brand retailer, influencer, you know, and of course, the pet lovers that do go as well. So, uh, so Phil is here and he's going to help me with all these questions, give you these answers. And um, he's on the line. I'm praying. He's there. Uh, are you there, Phil? Hey, Sam. Oh, my gosh. Hey, Sam, how are you? It's been quite the morning, Phil. <laughs> Good. Hey, Phil, just really quick note. If you want to grab that mic closer, that would be that would help me on this end. Yeah, that would be great. If you can just oh, work sure, right yeah. right off the end of that, that mic. Is that better? Oh, that's way better. How's that? Yes, that's good. That good. I'm yeah. happy. Yeah, okay. Great. Jim, can you turn Phil's mic up for me? Yeah. I'm so excited to be here. Thank you for having me. Me too. And it's just perfect timing, isn't it? Oh, did I lose you? Oh, it is. Oh. It is. I can't uh, I can't wait to meet you in person. Oh, let me tell you something. It's 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 high octane all the that's, way. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you know they say be careful what you wish for. <laughs> Be very careful, Phil. <laughs> and that's without having a cocktail. <laughs> I I get very... No, that's the perfect time. We I, can have cocktails and then meet. It'll be all good. Absolutely. Because here's the thing. I get very excited. I'm a very excitable person anyway. But I get very excited at connecting and being friends with people and learning about new stuff. And I just... Yeah. And Super Zoo is one of those places where I get very excited. Uh, last year was great. We had a ton of bloggers come in. And a lot of them... I knew from being online, but we finally got to meet. We went out for this crazy dinner. And it's right when Facebook Live was starting to get popular. And people were yeah. still a bit scared, I think, to get on Facebook Live. But, but no, I mean, it's a, uh, a nice Thai dinner and a bunch of uh, cocktails. Well, everybody's, you know, inhibitions just went away. And it was really, really fun to connect. And I know that a ton of them are coming back in. So we have to plan plan the crazy dinner or... Uh, I'll go and see Jim's show, which we'll tell you about later, which is fantastic. Ooh, sounds good, too. So what day do you fly in for Super Zoo? Oh, my gosh. I'm here. I'm going to be there this Sunday uh, before the show starts. And then I'm actually teaching at the show. So I'm teaching two lessons at the show the Monday. Oh, this is perfect. Uh, and then I will be I will be going nuts at the show as well. I it's uh, I was listening to you as you were introducing everything, and, you, and you're so right, like being able to connect with – you know, this this show is like the who's who of, of Penn. Mm -hmm. um, and so, uh, you know, those days are all about drinks and all about meeting people and, and making your, sure you're connected to all the right folks at, at uh, in the pet industry. So it's going to be pretty cool. Oh, I, it's, I used to say, it, the last couple of years, I feel, has, has got a little bit more exciting because I feel the industry is starting to embrace influences more. Realizing, you know, these influences have audiences that that say a brand or a re retailer doesn't have access to they haven't built that audience they've got their audience but influencers yeah. are the ones that you know bring these products to light and say or services and say 
check this out. This is what I think about this. And, and people trust an influencer and their opinions. And so it's, I think it's a fantastic way to actually market and team up with a, an influencer and realize the importance. Now, I still hear, because I'm in a lot of different groups, Phil, I still hear people say, I reached out to this blogger and I offered them a bag of treats and they said, no, they don't, they don't do it just for treats. <laughs> Yeah. And I, I have often had to explain, because I think I'm on both sides, you know, being a brand and being an influencer as well, yeah. where I've had to explain, let me tell you the value of this and, and, and why they will charge you to write a post, because it's not, it's, you're not paying for an opinion. You're paying for the access to that person's audience, yeah. the influence that person has over that audience and, and exposure. So, yeah, so you've, and the work, of course, it takes to write a blog post or yeah. a video you know, kind of thing. So I, I yeah. feel like there's, there's a connection missing there where, you know, a lot of these brands think, heck, I'm sending them some treats. You know, why aren't they snapping up this opportunity? But I, I feel like it's, it's, it's getting there. It's getting there as they realize bloggers say, no, this is how we pay our bills. And, um, and, and here's the thing. And you, you want an honest opinion on your product. And this is what we do. And we photograph it and video it. And, but it's, I think the value is fantastic in all honesty. I really think the value is fantastic. Yeah. So I, I think you, you got to think about it that way too, as you know, an influencer, you know, if, if you want to boil it down, an influencer is really a, a super fan. And so you really, yes. you know, and, and the thing is, is you're, you're paying because these super fans have people that really follow everything they say. And so. You know, if they go out and, and they really love your product and they write about you and they talk about you, we, we've heard it, um, that, you know, the, the people who follow these super fans will really go out and buy things based on that recommendation only. They might never have tried you, might never have heard about you. But as soon as that, that influencer or super fan starts talking about you, you generate a lot of groundswell, right? So it is important. Um, it's important to pay. For that, because you, you know, you're getting professional work done and you're not just getting someone who's doing this as a hobby, let's say. Um, and then, and then it's also important because you're, you're just going to get, you're going to get a really professional kind of product back in terms of a blog post or, or socials and all that kind of that, stuff. Right? That's so it's right. Definitely important. And it can, it can live for a long time on the internet. Mm -hmm. You know, so if you, if you have a, yeah. an agreement where, you know, it remains up there, you know, it could be up there indefinitely. Yeah. It could be a period of time. It could be something that pertains to say like a, 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 a sun holiday. So maybe July the 4th and it's, you're recommending pet products of so July the 4th and you, you know, agree on a time frame. It can really, really impact mm -hmm. your sales. And as you say, it's, it, it'll be a professional, uh, you know, blog post or whether they do a video, whatever it is, it'll be on a professional level. And to be honest with you, I think a lot of influencers, bloggers in particular, I think they charge too little. <laughs> I've got to be honest with you. I, I said, break it down, break it down to the hours and your skills that you require and then the audience that you have. And I think, gosh, that's kind of low, you know, and you've got to weigh it up. Like you say, you know, is it a hobbyist blogger? Is it a professional blogger? But it's mm -hmm. certainly an avenue that hopefully we'll get brands to really, really start to embrace. Because at the end of the day, the influencer, like you say, has built this this audience of people that trust what they say and they're looking to what they're recommending next. And yeah. each year, as you and I know, the pet industry is, gosh, I look back 10 years now, which it's changed. Oh my gosh, it's changed so much. <laughs> I mean, it's it's growing like leaps and bounds, right? It's it's recession-proof. The uh yes. You know, some of the snacks that you see now, they're, they're good enough to eat for us. You oh, know, I'm going, alone, you well, know, for pets. So, well, I'm going to yeah. tell you one thing. I've eaten Einstein's pets treats. I ate them on the oh air. Oh my gosh. They're so good. <laughs> they're so good. <laughs> Kelly Eisen, if you're listening, I've eaten one of your treats too. So I love Kelly. I she, oh, was yeah. at, she was, she was at the crazy amazing. dinner, Phil. She was at the crazy dinner. Oh, and she's good to get crazy with. We've become great, Definitely. great friends. Yeah, she has a fantastic energy and I find yeah. it so funny, but yeah, her treats. I've eaten them on the air and they're fantastic. So yeah, we've come a, a, a very long way when it comes to, uh, you know, pet products and, you know, how we integrate our pets fully into our lives. And as you say, it's recession proof. It is, mm -hmm. it keeps growing and growing and growing. And I think it's becoming more, what's the word? I feel like it's bringing pets and, and their pet parents together even more yeah. as 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 people are saying you know what i want to take my dog to the coffee shop i want yeah. to be able to take my dog for dinner i want yeah. furniture that looks gorgeous in my house and it's kind of integrating my pet into the furniture as well so i i yeah. feel like it's it's much more 
I would say sophisticated level, but a full, like an inclusive, like fully inclusive, yeah. as much as people possibly yeah. can do, as opposed to, I, I sometimes feel like pet parents and pets have separate lives a little bit, because, oh, well, I can't take my dog to that restaurant. Oh, they don't allow pets on the patio at that coffee shop. <laughs> but, yeah, but that's that's changing, right? Like yeah. the, the industry is starting to pick up on that, like as, as um pet owners really become pet parents and yes. it becomes more sophisticated. It's definitely, I mean, it's already outpacing, um, you know, kids, baby toys as an industry. <gasps> and so mm. the, you know, the growth that you're going to see and continue to see in pet is going to be huge, right? Because it really is about, um, lifestyle and, and how you incorporate, uh, and how you incorporate those, uh, um, you know, those pets in our lives every day. Right. So. Yeah. I mean, we just had take your dog to work day and, it just, to me, makes total sense. I'm going to work from home, so I have them with me. But I just did a segment on Fox 5 and uh, took a couple of my friends' uh, dogs with me. to be. They got their opportunity to be on TV. And it just proves a point. We What we did after the segment, we, did a, a, we went live on TV. We did a Facebook Live for the station. And then we took the dogs around the offices at this, yeah. the TV stations. And one, yes, it proves when you bring your pet to work, it makes people really happy, even yeah. those that don't have pets. Well... That we just proved that right now because I brought the monkey boy up here because he's licking his paws. And so Phil just saw him on our little – Phil and he's I wild. are on closed-circuit camera right now. So He's wild. He's Did a, you hear me trip when I was talking because, <laughs> because the, the dog showed up on the, on the camera and I'm just like, oh, my God, the dog. Wait, I'm still talking. What was I saying? Right? <laughs> so, he, he's wild in Mr. Twix. And this is the climber. He climbs on all the furniture. Oh Recently, we've had to move furniture because – we didn't, well, I, I blamed it on Jim. I'm going to tell you now, Phil. I blamed it on Jim why my lovely English teacups were always knocked over in the kitchen. And why would he not put them back on the saucer to find out a certain little gentleman you saw on camera there decided he could climb up furniture and walk around the kitchen oh on the gosh. countertops. Yeah, he's he some. He wants to drink out of the teacups too. He is some, he does though. That's the problem, Phil. He's, <laughs> whenever I, get... I think he wants that and he wants the bananas and he wants the bread that's on the countertop. <laughs> oh when I that's when I get a drink, I this is exactly what Mr. Twix thinks when I walk in with a drink. He goes, "Oh, that's nice. So you got me a drink." Because the first thing he does is face is in it. So I have to watch him. I don't mind the water, but he is very hydrated and I am com- completely dehydrated most of the time. <laughs> but he is a comic this dog. I just posted a video this morning of him opening a cupboard and climbing inside it. Oh my god. <laughs> he's, um, oh my god. He, we always say his middle name is where there's a will there's a way for this dog. Yeah. But you know what? We let him. We let him be a dog. We we'll let him be a dog, and yeah. uh, he's got a him and uh, and Thornton have a fantastic life. They really, really do. We we lost one of our girls a couple of months ago, so that's been a hard adjustment for us. Um, and I just think I think that's changing as well. Is how we you know, how we view and deal with losing a pet as well and some of the products yeah. that are online. And, and people have sent me some gorgeous things, um, you know, out of caring for how we feel about losing one of our pets. So the industry has definitely made some, I think, incredible changes. Uh, but what I love about you, Phil, is you're, you're like the go-to, like, um, I hate the word guru. I hate that word guru. I think you're more of a, what's the word? Uh, you're a sensei. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take it. Yeah, I'll that sounds it. good to me. Yeah, sure. Because, I mean, you, you you know about it from all aspects of this industry. So whether it's from uh, you know, from a re- just from a sales perspective, a, a buyer to doing global franchises, price points and margins and analytics, and, and of course, trends, you, you have a, a really amazing experience. I mean, amazing experience. Do you feel that you've got almost like a sixth sense when it comes to... I'll tell you what's happening right now, and I'll tell you what's going to happen in a year's time. Do you do you have that feeling as well with with the industry? Yeah, I mean, sometimes you you do you look at what's happening, and and uh, you do you know sometimes it's, it it really is a guess, but you can make educated guesses on where we're going and and what happens next. But we're always looking at that, right? We're always thinking about you know where are we going to be in two years, and you know how do we help folks get there faster? How do we you know, to keep folks from panicking and, you know, all sorts of things like yeah, that. Right? I would, so, you know, yeah. I would think yeah. panic is, I think everybody's been in those situations in business or in life where you say, if only I had just, you know, prepared yeah. or I, I knew I needed to yeah. do that and I actually just didn't take care of it. And now I'm scrambling, 
to to catch up and not drop behind and and I think having that kind of view of of what's coming based on what's happening now and what's happened in the past it, yeah. it kind of gives you this feeling i mean what what I'm seeing right now is I'm seeing of raw food being a huge thing right now. Yes. Um, I, the movie Pet Fold, I think, has a lot to do with people going, hmm, I didn't even consider raw. Um, it's yeah. not about raw food, but it's, it's, it's something people are saying, well, if I don't want to feed this kind of food, then I do want to know more about raw or a partial raw. So I'm seeing a huge trend in that. And, and really, I, I think changing up, how people because marketing is so powerful and, mar- and mm-hmm. marketing words are so powerful uh, but i'm seeing people more question what does that really mean on that label and i don't mean ingredients on the back yeah. so yeah that's definitely important but how yeah. is that marketed to me what does that really mean you know if it says fresh is there really anything fresh in there because it doesn't look fresh so i am seeing this trend in partial raw and dehydrated and and full raw diets yeah. uh, i'm also seeing a trend in of course cannabis for pets yes did you know? Did you know that Nevada, literally last Friday at midnight, was it Friday? Yep. Just before ahead of July the fourth, we we made recreational um, marijuana legal. Really? It's not even been a year for medicinal, and recreational was right on the heels of it. Yeah. Seriously. Really? So a bit. Look so how Canada's he sounds right very interested. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think our party's just got a little wilder. <laughs> You can't do it. You can't do it in public, though. <laughs> that's that's the thing. You know how people are here. I mean, you know how yeah. people are coming yeah, into yeah. town. Where they'll say, um, "Oh, it's you know whatever happens in Vegas stays in Vegas." Well, you just need to stay in your house when you're doing yeah. it because uh, you will be under influence. They will arrest you, but you know there's a ton of people that probably don't even know that so i said to jim maybe we'll just stay in on like saturday (laughs) night and we won't go anywhere because who knows i mean it was right ahead of july the 4th so people started partying on friday at midnight and this is the craziest thing phil but it's crazy for anyone listening in that doesn't live into this in this crazy town but at midnight there were hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people lined up outside these dispensaries and mm-hmm. some of the they had djs they had food trucks oh <laughs> the munchies and munchies. they had they were giving away some of them were giving away uh, a gram of free cannabis to the first hundred people in line i swear <laughs> that is that's insane this, that's, uh, this town you, you know what though sam that that's probably going to happen up here right because canada has been uh, kicking around legalizing cannabis for a while right and and i think we're you getting that i don't i don't know how long we are but we're, we're really close like i think we're two or three months out here as well so um so we can have a, a party down there and then the uh, when, you guys, when you guys come up here we'll party again and it'll be all good That's you right. know medicinally it's really a miracle product it's unbelievable well, for, for humans yeah. and for pets for, for pain yeah. and for cancer and for all kinds of things i mean yeah. you take the drugs thing away from it it really is probably going to be a game changer yeah. Oh, I think yeah, it is. I mean, I already know friends right now who are, who are giving medicinal cannabis to their pets. And of course, we know it's it's not the cannabis yeah. that you smoke at home. You know, the, the high part of it is removed out of it. But uh, we we have friends right now whose dog was given, you know, just a, a very short period of time to live. And the dog's still alive because they started on, on uh, mm-hmm. cannabis for pets. And so uh, we are seeing some amazing benefits for pets, most definitely. So that's, uh, I mean, really, Phil, that's you and I, I think we'll just walk around yeah. super zoo and just come back loaded with cannabis pet treats because I, I think that's going to be one of the biggest Excellent. things that we see um, yeah. at Super Zoo. And yeah. I, another thing I'm seeing now is people trying to understand supplementation for the pets, probiotics, yes. prebiotics, um, yeah. those kind of things as well. So I think there's, there are a lot of parallels between what do we do for ourselves, we can probably do for our pets as well uh, if we just get the right information and, and get educated on it. So what trends are you seeing? What, what are you seeing? What, what are you saying, you know what, well, this is what's happening right now, this is exciting, yeah. or I see where this is going? There's, there's some really neat things. So I think um, on that, on supplements and things like that, I think it's just going to get bigger and bigger because we are getting more sophisticated as a, you know, as a pet parent really. And so you're, you are going to do that. The other things that are really neat from an industry's perspective, that I think consumers are going to really love is one brands that start to partner together. So we, we saw this really cool initiative by um, a company called bear and the rat that does uh, frozen yogurt for dogs. Right. And they, um, and they went out and, um, 
partnered with a brand called Bowser Beer, which does beer for dogs. Yep. Um, right? And these two guys um, are just amazing. And so they figure out how to co-pair um, a frozen yogurt with with a, a complimentary um, beer for dogs. And so it's this super experience that, you know, pet owners love because now you've got You've got a beer for the dog. You've also got, um, you know, frozen yogurt for the dog. And so I think the, I think the consumer is going to start to see more brands do things together like that. Wow. Um, cause it just makes, you know, like it just makes that, like imagine Mr. Twix, like with two of those things, right? Like any yes. one would be amazing. Two would just be like off the hook, right? And yeah. so I think you're going to see that more and more. That's really yeah. interesting. I, I, I would imagine. Um, that takes a lot of a shared vision as well yes. to make that yeah. work. I mean, because you and I know that, you know, whether you, sometimes people partner with a friend and, and put a little band together yeah. before you know it, the band's broken up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, <laughs> and it's and true. I would imagine it's the true. groundwork, there's a fair bit of groundwork and of course being able to get on and understand have the same yeah. vision. And of course, once you succeed yeah. in a certain direction, that's got yeah. to be, you know, that's got to be quite difficult that's, to put that together. Yeah, no, it's pretty cool though. I mean, these two, uh, they just decided that they, they wanted to be able to grow together and, and they thought they could help each other. And, and, uh, I think you're going to start to see that stuff get easier, right? Because brands are starting to realize that, you know, like it doesn't need to be complicated, right? So in, yeah. you know, what we've seen in the past is like, oh, we've got to sign all these agreements and we've got to be, you know, we've got to be, you know, fully um, non-competitive or we're going to make sure it's all fair. And I think you're starting to see brands just go, hey, you know what? This is cool for you and it's cool for me. So let's just figure out one thing that you need and one thing I need and make sure it comes through for us. Right. Um, yeah. So that's really cool. The the other thing that's really cool is um, the amount of boutique products that are come out. So you're starting to see a ton of little brands that are putting out just amazing, amazing product. There's this um, really cool company called um, Push Pushy, and they do rain jackets for dogs, um, oh. which is not new. But what they do with the hood is they they've got it's like a uh, it's like a, a baby carriage canopy, you right? Know, the way those roll up, and so it's like this you know rain jacket with with a canopy that rolls up on top of the dog. So the dog almost looks like a Martian a little bit, but it's super effective at keeping like the dog's head, you know, uh, from getting wet and and being able. To, to let them swivel around and be flexible at the same time. Like really, really cool product, right? Oh, so you're going to see wow. a lot of little, really, really cool brands start to push up and, and just be, um, you know, like think of that for the consumer, right? You used to be able to buy, you know, one thing or two things uh, and you'd have to pick, like everyone would have the same products. Now you're able to get almost whatever you want, right? Whenever you want it. And all sorts of people make different things now that, that oh, are going to be amazing. Oh, I'm just so, looking at it yeah. right now. Yeah. So that's cool, right? Yeah, that's fantastic. <laughs> yeah, because they'd always yeah. have a wet head, you know, yeah. <laughs> always. Yeah. So what yeah. what we're we going to do? And usually a hood gets wet as well. But actually, yeah. this, that's gosh, that's so clever. I love a product I that solves a problem. Yeah. I love that. I mean, yeah. we've seen some of them, so but cool. I would say some of the most successful products are those that just solve problems, and sometimes they're the most simplest solution. Yeah. But they really do solve the problem. And so I yeah. really enjoy that kind of product. Like I, I like yeah. the product by um Sylvie with the um the angel wings. Oh, oh my gosh, yeah. for the blind dogs. Oh my gosh, what's it called now? Oh. Muffins. Uh, Muffins Halo. There Muffins we go. Muffins Halo, yes. And, so and, cool. And it came out of an, a need. But yeah. how am I going to solve this for my dog so that my dog has a better quality of life? I just think it's amazing. So I get yeah. very excited about those kind of products. Yeah. Um, yeah. and I just, I just think people just want to do the very best they can for their pets. Yeah. There was a time when people would laugh and mock people that did that, but now it's yeah. just normal. No. <laughs> no. And I think, I think you're going to see like, what's really cool. Like even like muffins, halo, like the, the thing that makes them so amazing is the story that it brings. Right. So it used yes. to be like, I just want to make a product and it's got to be good. And that's it. Right. But now it's like, no, I want to know. Like, I want to know who makes Muffins Halo. I want to know why, like, what dog inspired that. And that's going to make people, um, you know, continue to buy these products, right? So, you know, Muffins Halo might stay a really tiny brand and it won't matter, you know, no. because people will come because the story is so compelling 
that it makes it a reason for them to buy that product. The emotional connection, I think, is very important mm. with products. Right. Um, and, and usually, yeah. you know, I think it's the same for babies too. You see things, oh my God, they're so cute. Yeah. My baby looks so cute in that. And I do think that emotional connect- connection is important. I did see a leash recently, and I'm not going to mention them, but <laughs> for a reason. <laughs> but I saw the potential of this leash for other things yeah like oh my gosh that could solve that oh my gosh that would be amazing yeah. for that and then upon talking to them they didn't even see the potential of their own leash and weren't that bothered yeah. <laughs> you know and i thought it was it was basically to team them up with um either you know something like dogs on the streets of london where yeah. you, you know they've you don't always want a leash that's clipped onto them, but maybe right. you could do a double leash and a, and a leash that cannot be cut because I guess it's made out of fabric, right. this particular leash, but it's one yeah. that would just retract as well. Got so it. It, it, I just Very saw, because cool. we were talking about the theft, you know, there's a lot of theft of pets of, mm. from homeless people on the streets and that's their mm-hmm. only companion in life. And yeah. and But they didn't even, they didn't see it. They weren't bothered. <laughs> yeah. So I thought, well, maybe I'll find another company that they could possibly team up with and work with. But I thought, I thought that would be a great solution for them. Is sometimes they're sleeping and they've got a normal leash on. Yeah. If they had the second one, and that's the one that no one can cut through, yeah. then yeah, you know, yeah. you're you're really you know maybe something that had a bell on it that when you went to sleep, you know that got clipped onto the dog's collar so that you you would yeah. be you know uh, you, uh, what's the word yeah. you, you notified were, alerted. Yeah. Um, yeah. But now they didn't see that at all. And I thought, oh wow, that could be huge because here's the thing: the organization could have people buy them for the, the dogs on the streets. Right. So this wasn't about hey give every, give this this organization a ton of free product. Right. This was about which I would do if it was me. I would give a ton of free product. Yeah. But it would also be help help us to help them. And and I think that's what um Muffins Halo does because she also they gift those to other dogs who need them and whose pet parents can't afford them so other people donate money for those. Yeah. And and I think so, like they say that emotional connection she keeps that going through those stories too. Yeah. Amazing. Which is amazing. Yeah. You you know, so the suggestion you had is the other piece. Like if you think about when you were talking about influencers in the beginning and what it could do for you, um, that suggestion you had, that's another thing that influencers do great at, right? Is, is they see your product from a different vantage Mm -hmm. point and they're able to help you accelerate your brand, right? So if that brand had been receptive to you, you just opened a new, you know, avenue, new revenue stream for them, right? Yes. So you, you would have been able to see something that they're not trained to see, right? So that's the other thing that influencers are really great at is being able to see things from a totally different vantage. Yeah, or, or find another mm-hmm. use for it or an additional yeah. use for it. or yeah. And I think also, to be honest, I think reviews need to be very honest, the the yep. pros and the cons. It, w- it doesn't matter whether you're paid. You're not, yep. you, I don't think you should pay for someone just to say how fantastic it is. No. I think you should pay for an honest review. And here's the thing. It helps that company then maybe improve their product as well. Mm-hmm. You know, right. like, hey, I found yeah. this to be great. Or uh, like, for example, example we had to pick up a cone for one of our dogs well guess what they it seems like they they have a missing size the the one below is too small the one below above it was too big and i thought how right. on earth but i mean such a big difference how on earth did they yeah. miss that you need an additional size in between yeah. and i don't have a crazy a strange size dog so it was just odd to me that yeah. that they are, it's still that way years later that you know, and if i did an honest <laughs> review about it it would be you're missing a size yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Or there could be a, a demographic of dog, a certain size of dog that yeah. always misses out. It always seemed to be when we started our company, Vegas Rock Dog, it always seemed to me that there was nothing for big dogs. There were no T-shirts and tank tops for big dogs. And I just thought, that's rough. <laughs> I mean, yeah. And and yeah. so I think, you know, noticing where where the market is, is missing something also can be a fantastic totally. way of yeah. promoting your product or adding to it already, you know. But yeah. it's... Um, it, like you say, it's, it's an ever-changing industry, and like you say, it's uh, it's it's bulletproof when it comes to recession. People will still take mm-hmm. care of their pets no matter what's going on. But we're just spending even more and more and more and more and more. In fact, I spend more on my own pets than I do myself, and that is no oh joke. My gosh. Yeah. <laughs> well, listen, for let's take yeah. a quick break because I've got okay. a ton more questions for you. Yeah. And uh, I want to be able to, for us to kind of guide people when they come to Super Zoo, particularly, well, not not so much if they've never been. Maybe they've been and not 
not felt that they got enough out of it, but they're going again for another try. Maybe we can give them some tips and tricks and stuff to really maximize their time there. So, well, hang on. Um, you are listening to Vegas Rock Dog Radio with me, Sam, your host, the queen of rock and roll dogs. And we are going to be right back with a big echo. <laughs> Vegas Rock Dog Radio. Pets. People. Pop culture. At Carl's Jr., not only do we make you happy with our delicious charbroiled burgers, we also make your dogs happy. Come through our drive through with your furry friends and we'll offer them a treat. We'd love to see their smiling faces. Our website, carlsjunioroflasvegas.com, has a treat in store for its customers too, with free coupons anytime, so visit us often. Carl's Jr. is a proud and active supporter of animal adoption in our community. You can find us at Carl's Jr. of Las Vegas.com. Pet Scene Magazine is dedicated to Las Vegas pets and the people who love them. It's a source of news and information for pet lovers, as well as offering valuable coupons and specials on pet products and services. Find them online at www.lvpetscene.com or look for them on Facebook. Vegas Rock Dog Radio. Pets. People. Pop culture. Welcome back, everyone. You're listening to Vegas Rock Dog Radio with me, Sam, your host, the queen of rock and roll dogs. And I've got the king of retail online, and that is Phil Chang. Hi, <laughs> Phil. Hello. I love wow, you've been bestowed a title the by the queen. <laughs> I know. I'm moving up in the world. I started as a guru, and then and then I was a sensei, and now I'm the king. I like it. Let, me, right. let me go in the room and get a sword, and we'll knight him. <laughs> we could do that. In fact, you know what we just did the other night, Phil? This is the craziest thing, and we're addicted to it now. These escape rooms. Have you ever been to oh, an yeah. escape room? Oh, my yeah. God. It was like yeah, a it was, so fun. it was like a knight to the round table thing, talking of swords, and there we were running around with actually think about it those swords are dangerous jim i'm surprised they allowed us to have those swords but um we didn't get out we did not escape (laughs) you should have hacked your way through with the sword we should have but we did get out of alcatraz after i turned over a bed which i don't think you're supposed to do but uh, (laughs) we were desperate we needed to get out It's, it's a big popular thing right now in vegas so i think they need an animal themed one that's what i think jim don't you (laughs) <laughs> yeah, that would be a pretty good idea. Like, you have to not get eaten by, like, wolves. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's an incentive there, that's for sure. Well, Super Zoo is a zoo of, <laughs> of all kind of animals. Oh, gosh, there's yeah. the grooming competitions that go on and, of course, every kind of grooming product that you can find. And then there are aisles of food, treats, clothing, beds, you name it, gates, I mean, everything you could think of. And I think you get to see a lot of sights as well because <laughs> you'll see some crazy looking dogs and their crazy pet parents as well dressed up. And some of them come, I think, just for the attention, in all honesty. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. I almost got, last year, I almost got run over. I don't know if you saw, there was a porcupine there last year. No. Uh, yeah. And I was, I was busy messaging the office and, and I almost got run over by this porcupine. <laughs> So crazy. <laughs> you see so it crazy. all. It's so much yeah. fun, though. It's ridiculous. Yeah. Well, I think one of the tips, and it's a very practical tip I can give for anybody that's coming, is comfortable shoes. Although I still mm-hmm. wear a heel when I go because I'm that girl. But if you are someone that, uh, you know, you, you, you're going to do some miles. I think one of the bloggers was tracking herself on a Fitbit last year, and it was an insane amount of miles that she did trudging around. Um, it seemed bigger than normal last year. I felt like it was huge last year and a little bit overwhelming. So, as I say, be a bit practical. Have com- comfortable shoes in your bag, at least, if you're going to wear high heels and then you can put them on later. Uh, I think it's going to be bigger this year, Sam. Oh, uh, they man. added 500 booths, I think. So, <gasps> they're somewhere in the 2,500 booth range. Oh. And then they actually sold out. So, I actually think <sighs> there are people on the waiting list trying to get in. So, that's it's kind of crazy. Unbelievable how it's grown. Yeah. Unbelievable. Because when the recession hit, we saw a big, a big reduction, of course. Mm-hmm. Lots of companies went out of business or just couldn't afford to go and do the shows themselves. And that's already one of the biggest conventions centers in town oh it's, it's massive huge. that convention center is so yeah. good last year they had those you could rent the golf carts couldn't you jim 
Mm-hmm. That's no, it. I didn't go last year. I didn't see that. Oh, they had, they had golf cart. People on these like golf cart things. I thought that's brilliant. That really? makes so I much sense. Like a jazzy. You know those, <laughs> those jazzies yeah. you see on TV? You see, if I had one, I'd have to have it all tricked out. You know, <laughs> I'd, have to have, I'd have the radio logo on the back of it. <laughs> I'd maximize everything I could possibly do. But yeah, I think there's some practical things like, you know, make sure you're comfortable because you are going to walk miles and miles and miles. Yeah. Uh, I would definitely see if you can do a, a bag with wheels on it. And, uh, and then I, and I think people really need a plan. Now, of course, I go as press. So I get to meet a lot of people in the press room and, and I just keep saying every year, they need a bar in there. <laughs> They need a bar and they need a stripper pole in there. No. (laughs) Wait, that's for the party after. Yeah. Just hold that thought for later. But uh, let's talk from a perspective of a a, a brand that is Mm -hmm. going to be plonked down in the middle of SuperZoo. What what can they do? Because like you say, there's a lot of companies there. How do they stand out from everybody else? Anything that you could offer a brand that's listening in – to stand out from the crowd and and you know bring people to their booth because that's all it's about because there are a lot of yeah. choices and yeah. I and I guess you know when depending on where your booth is located that can be yeah. an advantage or a disadvantage too sometimes you don't have the luxury of that if you're kind of late to the game so yeah. what advice would you would you give brands kind of leading up to SuperZoo so you you want to do you know brands spend a lot of money to be at these shows and there are a lot of people that go so. You want to try and make sure that you create every opportunity you can to stand out and for people to remember you. So before you go to the show, do a ton of social media. You should be talking about what you're going to see, you know, what you're showing off at the booth. Um, you can, uh, like Hava has a, a group section that you can go into and, and talk about what you're going to be doing, track trends, be able to talk about those intelligently. Um, and then when you get to the show, you you want to be able to make sure that, you know, potential buyers or potential uh, retailers are, are going to remember you. And so I would say, you know, when you're at the booth, track them with something interesting, you know, so when you give them your card, maybe take a picture with them, you know, and so right. when you're doing your follow up, now you've got a picture with you and the, the buyer, and that's going to trigger someone to go, oh my gosh, I did see 2000 booths, but I remember taking that picture <laughs> how cool they sent it to me. And now you've got a chance to be able to follow up with them. That is um, a fantastic so, tip, yeah. Phil. Um, it, it is a fantastic tip. And how easy is that? Yeah, and here's the thing. Super simple to do. And here's the yeah. thing. You know, most people, if they're in the photograph with a brand or, mm-hmm. you know, an influencer, they're probably going to share it as well on yeah. on their social media too. Yeah. So I, yeah, I think that's a great tip, a really great tip. Um, I'm a big fan of Facebook Live. I am a huge because yeah. i feel like the reach is just phenomenal right now until they decide yeah. <laughs> we can't reach as many people but i it, i think people really should take advantage of that leading up to as well and during um i think that's a brilliant um aspect as well what else do you think people could do as far as a brand goes what's the most unique thing that you've seen a brand do to get attention at one of these shows i guess that would be uh, interesting oh to gosh, know I, this makes this adds to the circus but i, I think i remember <laughs> seeing a brand um you know hire people uh, in, in animal costumes and then, and then, uh, and then walk around and hand out cards and, and hand out, you know, so imagine a giant camel walking around and then, uh, and then having, you know, handing out cards for your booth. Yeah. Uh, that's pretty memorable. Like that's, uh, that's something that you, you definitely remember. So, uh, any of that stuff is really cool. And then I, I think a lot of it is about follow up, right? So if you, if you've got a retailer in your booth, try and track as much detail as you can, right? Like you, you have a million conversations. So you've got a, you've got maybe 30 seconds to write down everything you can, but the more you can play back for the buyer, the more likely they're going to remember who you are. Yeah. Right. And that's, that's critical, right? Like when you're done the show, you've probably got a week or so um, to really get at those contacts, right? Because most brands only need one of those buyers to, to turn around in order for them to make the show worth it. Yes. So you want to right. want to get to those guys like right away. And, and so, you know, they remember who you are. Now they've got a picture with you. Uh, you've given them, you've played back all the details that you talked about in the show. So you make it easier for a retailer to say, hey, you know what? This guy put a lot of work into details and remembering who I am. Um, 
this is going to be worth it. I should I should chase down an order and figure out how to do that. Right? It it goes a long yeah. way. And as you were saying uh, just before about you know hiring people to dress up in animal costumes, think about this. Yeah. Most people like to just stick on their booth. They stay yeah. at the booth. Now you're not yeah. working the whole show, but if you've got yeah. staff that you can send out, it, particularly if you're stuck in a corner somewhere, and you go, yeah. you know, it's a long way for people to get all the way back there. The action's happening in this area. Yeah. You can then utilize your staff and the space there and, yeah. and catch people. I think it's a brilliant tip. Um, yeah. I do think that like you say the effort that people make to get as much information and then follow up means yeah. a lot. It, it's about building relationships, isn't it? I mean, it really yeah. is about relationships and, and who you, who you work with and, and, you know, do you care about their product and you want to carry it? Or I, I think it's the relationships are the biggest thing. Um, as I say, Facebook Live, I think is genius. Uh, it, it got, it's got that exciting, instantaneous, ooh, it just popped up. And the great thing is yeah. you, you can subscribe yeah. to that next person's, you know, Facebook yeah. Live. So you'll not miss out a single thing. Now, one well, thing. Think about it this way, too, right? Like if you send out a tweet or you post an Instagram, you've got it, or even a Facebook post, you, you really get about three seconds, right, of that person's time while they're flipping through things. Yes. When you run a Facebook Live, you've got them. Yes. You know, like you, you easily got them for 30 seconds and that's 30 seconds. That's 27 seconds longer than you had yeah. for tweet for a tweet or a message or a picture. Right. And so that's, that's compelling. That's, that's a lot, you know, that you can work with. I think making it as easy as possible to access mm-hmm. you is the way to go. Um, yeah. for an example, I look at a lot of uh, bloggers, for example, who give away a lot of products through, through these online, you know, little giveaways and stuff. And, mm-hmm. you know, of course, I mean, I think the ultimate thing they would like to get from you is, is probably your email address if anything but then i look at some of them and i'm like are you really you really that's a lot of hoops and i don't want to go through a lot of hoops i know it only takes a few seconds but we're now at a point where we want it very very quickly so it's all right saying well you know i'm you're going to earn that entry into that competition but you're probably going to lose people because of it so the instantaneous thing now get this you i don't know if you know about this but there's a bot that you can set up in the back of your Facebook Live before you go live. And it's a keyword. Uh, this is amazing. And I'll send you a link for this. And I learned this from Molly Mahoney, the prepared performer. I don't know if you've seen her. She is so fantastic at Facebook she's Live. Amazing. Yeah. So yeah. she's the one I, I learned about this from. Um, and it's basically, she'll say on a live Facebook live, Hey guys, you want to know more about my, my course or you want to sign up about on my course, uh, in the comments, just write the word and she gives them a keyword, just like one word. Nice. And what happens is, is the minute you do it, it sends a, a message that she has pre-prepared straight into your messenger. Nice. <laughs> and I thought nice. that now we've got a bigger connection with people. I've just sent you some information directly into your personal messenger inbox. And from there, I can still continue to communicate with you. And I thought, oh, that's that's genius. And and I I love that tip from her. I, I think you can never... I think you've just constantly got to keep learning and reading and discovering yeah. and finding out what works and what doesn't work and trying everything because I, I don't, I just feel that as a, for a brand, well, anyone that's promoting anything is that it's never going to be, this is how we advertise. This is how yeah. we promote. This is how we yeah. connect. It will be forever changing. Yeah. And, and I think people Absolutely. need to just keep adopting it. I know it can be a little bit tiring, exhausting, or something new. But the new stuff works. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, it's so cool what you can do with the new stuff. Well, you know, Facebook's so now, amazing. they're going to eventually allow us to do the face-to-face uh, yeah. interview stuff soon. And they're also going to allow audio, live audio, too, which is great for us for a radio show. We're going to also throw it out there as well. Crazy. Um, crazy. I just, I just, it is crazy. And so much of this is, costs nothing or very inexpensive yeah. compared to when you look back some of the traditional advertising that we we did um yeah. but i think that's i think that's great advice for for brands is how you're going to stand out and it is vegas peoples you can be as wacky as you want you can bring a porcupine yes, <laughs> to the show and if, if, uh, well, maybe bring something less dangerous yeah <laughs> i mean where did they go to take it to the bathroom poor thing i, I mean where would know. it go I <laughs> but i just think being out there and super creative um i did a thing you remember when we did the they all those... would go to the porky potty oh <laughs> <gasps> see now there's a pro now we need to invent that product phil we need to get it designed <laughs> see that's my nugget for the day 
You see, this is how products happen, isn't it? You know, one day on the show, Phil, this was years ago, we were talking about fostering pets. I don't know how people can do it. It's so difficult. You know, you love them and then you're going to get them to the next home. And I said, oh, my gosh, I would be such a foster fail. And right there and then I went, that's it. I'm doing T-shirts. And a week later, I had the T-shirts out. Hashtag foster fail. Now, people use it a lot. And I'm like, I was the original. <laughs> Thank you very much. Some things that's are hard amazing. to control once you put them out there. Yeah. Sometimes yeah. you just say, I'll give you that one. That's okay. Yeah. Uh, but we, for example, and, and this is impossible to actually control, is we own the copyright for Yappy Hour. <laughs> oh really so yeah so that's hilarious that's like playing whack-a-mole every day yeah. um yeah. and it comes to be a point where you're just like oh i can't yeah. i can't send another polite cease and desist <laughs> <laughs> i'll always give people a chance and then if you don't take the chance then you know what it can be yeah. a little bit like a sour patch kid you know uh yeah. sweet and then they're sour <laughs> <laughs> But we do. We own the copyright on that. So you can imagine. Oh, it's crazy. And we started it years ago. And it's and people are like, you do? Really? I mean, how's it? Yeah. It's a, it's a government copyright. You can find it online. Uh, to be honest, honest with you, I probably should just sell it. Because it comes to a point where you like to be unique and original. But then when someone else has a nabs your idea, and even though you yeah. own it and you can't control it, I think, well, I'm not yeah. going to use it. I don't want to use it now. Because yeah. uh, everybody's using it. It, yeah. It's lost its, you know, its excitement. So maybe, its thing. maybe yeah. we'll maybe we'll put it up for sale. It's a big one, isn't it? Yappy hour. Yeah, I go to, yeah. I get invited to yappy hours. <laughs> oh my God. I'm like, really? Okay. <laughs> uh, but if they're raising money for animals, I'm okay with it. I might use it. I'm good with that. Uh, but uh, where, where, where were we going with this? Oh yeah, about being unique. <laughs> just be yes. unique as yeah. crazy as you can. Because you just never know what will catch on. For example, and you may have seen this film, and I know you are, and I've not spoke about this, but did you see the story of the little puppy that was found at the airport here in Vegas? And the heartbreaking note that went along with it, um, that the, the girl who the dog belonged to was escaping, you know, um, an abusive relationship, getting on a plane and leaving. Couldn't afford to pay for a ticket for the dog, but she was fleeing for her life. And I don't know if you saw it in the, in the news. No, I didn't. Oh, it's it, well, That's my crazy. It, it happened. It happened here in town. The dog ended up at a, a very nice rescue here in town, and a friend of ours happens to be a foster, and she is fostering the dog. So we met the dog last Sunday. Had these cute pictures. Put them up there, and literally two days later, this is a worldwide viral story. Inside edition, uh, people.com, uh, the dodo, <laughs> Australia, yeah. England, Canada, uh, you name it across the entire oh, country. I see it now. This is about Chewy. Yes. Chewy, yeah. So, wow, that's so that's such a crazy as I say, sometimes you just don't know what story people will connect with or what wacky idea you came up with at a at a uh, pet industry show that will just catch on and become really, really viral. But for this one, clearly it was an emotional connection that people connected to. But yeah, isn't that the, I couldn't believe it. Every day people were tagging me and saying, have you seen this story? And I'd send a picture about me with a dog. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, I have actually, I've met the cute dog, but um, the dog's going to be fine by the way, which is great. Cause he had been kicked in the head and yeah. um, needed to get uh, into the emergency vet just to get checked out. But um, that emotional connection. And I think that's what a lot of pet products have yeah. is, oh, that pampers my dog. Oh, my dog would just be so comfortable in that bed. Or I, I think having those kind of connections, like I say, uh, Muffins, Halo, definitely a human connection. Mm -hmm. um, what I love about Kelly's products is the fact that humans can eat it and pets can eat it. So that must be good for us. And it must be good yeah. for them. It's those... Well, Feelings. And, and Abby is the chief taster, right? So her Wesley yes. is, is the chief. Yes. Like that's that's just so cool in the in the story. I mean, you know, you're going to test it with your own dog, but but just incorporating Abby in the story makes Kelly's story just so much more unique, right? And relatable, yeah, very, very relatable. Because cool. yeah. oh, yeah. I feel that way about my dog, yeah. and and yeah. and so that's why you know Chewy's story was one of those. There was a connection of uh, for lots of people that had to be hard for her to leave the dog. Mm -hmm. 
and but she had yeah. to flee for her life but you know what the way i look at it is she got her and the dog out herself yeah. and the dog out yeah. many abusers will not leave if they can't take yeah. their pets and often there isn't a lifeline for the pets so yeah. the story for this was that a rescue is an option if you have yeah. to get out and you know you can't take your pet that you can work with a rescue to take your pet so so it's it's that co that connection that emotional that feeling and i think we buy things based on feelings and how it looks yeah. it, we, we yeah. buy with our eyes and now we feel about what we're looking at and touching and feeling and you know if i pick up a dog blanket oh this is so soft oh my dog i'd wrap my dog up in this and it's that simple connection that yeah. i think really works for products um so that's for brands so when it comes to retailers retailers are coming they're going the uh, it can be a bit of a vulture mentality can't it when you've got that retailer badge on <laughs> Because yeah. everybody wants to sell your product to you. I would think it would be quite easy to be overwhelmed and maybe not a little bit practical. You know, you know maybe you over order something or yeah. uh, what kind of advice can you give for retailers? So retailers are, you know, right now, I, I think retailers have a tough go in the market, right? Like there's a lot of stuff going on. There's there's Amazon buying Whole Foods and yeah. Amazon's kind of getting into everything. So I, retailers feel really pressured right now. And I think this is a really neat place for retailers to go and just take a break from that. So one is you are looking for really unique brands because this is your moment to be very, very different from an Amazon or one of these guys. You can find a unique brand that can help you stand out and, and be very different for your consumers. So I think you, you're coming to the show looking for boutique brands. You're looking for what we call a craft brand, someone who has limited runs that could make you look very, you know, stand out very differently from your competition. Um, so that's one. I think the other one you're also looking for lines up with the trends that we were talking about earlier about brands that are finding partners to work with. Um, and so think of it this way. Like, you know, when you're a retailer and you're building a store, you're always thinking about like, how many things can you sell? You know, how do I sell them? If you had two brands that came to you and said, hey, listen, I want to do something with this other brand. And I think I can just, I don't even need you, the retailer, to do anything I'm just going to put them together and I'm going to do, I'm going to do this amazing experience thing for you. It, it makes your job easier as a retailer. Yeah. So you're always looking for brands that are thinking in that mindset of, could I do something different? Could I partner differently? Those guys will make you really stand out as a retailer. That makes so much sense. And I think it also makes mm -hmm. sense. I mean, often I go into stores and, and they're very nicely laid out, but it's always the exact same brand all on that same yeah. shelf. And you, it doesn't give you the idea that you could, like you say, pick up a dog beer and then, oh, I can pick up the, the, the dog yogurt. It's right next to it. Um, I mean, in, right in my head right now, I'm thinking displays and I'm thinking you've got the dog beer, you've got the, the yogurt, you've got the, I think, a picnic blanket for you and your dog. Uh, you know, those kind of things, a Frisbee, like, oh, this is, and this is kind of leads down the path of what we do when we raise money for animals uh, through uh, Rocking for Rescues. We put our basket, baskets together together as themes and i th yeah. i'd like to see that in yeah. in pet retail stores which oh, is yeah. it's summer now so picnic with your pet oh I'm, i'll buy the blanket I'll, I'll get the the treats i'll get the the beer i'll get the toy and we can have a great picnic outdoors with your pet so we've done a lot of that kind of stuff and i'd love to see that in stores instead yeah. of the same shelf with the same product yeah it looks lovely when it's all lined up perfectly and the labels are facing forward i love all that but it's not telling me as a consumer, there are other products that go with this no, and, and create an yeah. experience for you and your pet or just yeah. your pet. So yeah. I, I think that's a brilliant idea and it does make you stand out and you can forever change those as seasons change and holidays and those kind of things. So yeah. I, I do like to see that. Um, like you see, it's very competitive and you can't be Amazon. <laughs> you, you know, so what can you be so you've got to you can, you can be what they can't right like so amazon yeah. is really cool at getting you cheap stuff and and they can do it really fast but you know you as a retailer i mean you can create exactly that moment i mean you take those baskets you amazon could never do that so a, yeah. a consumer can leave your store going oh my gosh like this retailer thought of everything that i might want for Fourth of July. Yes. You know, and now my dog is going to have the same experience I am. We're going to be able to party together. And I only had to go to one place to do it. I didn't have to work that hard at it. Yeah. Because I knew what I wanted, right? And Amazon can't do that. Amazon will say, 
hey, other people bought this. You should think about it. But it's never going to be the same as an experience of you guys were thinking about me. Like, yes. I'm your consumer, right? And that's the that's the voice you want to carry into the show if you're a retailer. Yeah. And I, I guess you're just saying, you know, this works with this and this works with that. And, and we mm. could, like you said, make it easy. I mean, I'd love to be able to walk into a store and say, oh, I'm here to pick up my July the 4th basket. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. it, I know it's got everything in it and I don't have to yeah. fish around for everything. I love that idea. I mean, I would love, you know, I, I, I kind of like the idea of those, you know, the monthly subscription boxes, which I think some yes. of them are dying off right now. But can you imagine if you get to choose all the brands that you love? You know, I love oh this gosh. makeup yeah. and I love, you know, the shoes from yeah. this company and da, 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 da. And you know, every time you open that box, oh my gosh, these are my favorite brands. But they made it easy and it puts it together for you. I, I do think, like you say, it is hard sometimes to get out of that traditional way of thinking, which is how much can I get on are these products going to get on my shelf and how much can I yeah. sell them for and, and get them moving? But, but I think we all enjoy a shopping experience, don't we? I think we yeah. enjoy the, the the fun of that. So I think that's a, a really, really great tip. Um, and I would say also to ask a lot of questions. Uh, you know, sometimes I think I think brands sometimes can get a little bit offended if you ask them a question. For example, <laughs> I'm not going to say the company name, but <laughs> they had T-shirts that were flea and tick repellent T-shirts. And it, it, I said to them, "What whatever is in this T-shirt can it be absorbed into my pet's skin? And they didn't like me asking that question. They go, oh, it's, it's oh, safe really? for pets. I said, well, what is the product though? What is in yeah. that t-shirt? I need to know, yeah. and it, is there any kind of study that it can absorb? And, and they, they didn't like me asking that question. But I think don't be, don't be scared to ask a question because you'll no, get the yeah. answers. Because yeah. if I'm questioning it, there's going to be other people that say, I know you say it works and it repels flea and ticks, but how exactly does that work? You know, is it going to yeah. harm my pet? And and and, yeah. and then you've got a product sat on the shelf that's probably not going to sell. So I, th I think you have to look at I – th I've always looked at products like that anyway for my pets. Like, mm -hmm. can they choke on that? Can they break that in half? <laughs> you know, yeah. those, is it approved by me? Does it meet all the criteria? So I do, I do look at things like that anyway, because I'm always from a safety perspective, because you never know what a dog can get into. <laughs> no, it's, it's important, right? And, and now more than ever, as, as, you know, pet owners are becoming pet parents, these, um, you know, they're really becoming our kids, right? And so you are, looking at all the same things that you would look at for a kid as well, right? So it's definitely brands should be ready to answer all of those questions and, and retailers shouldn't be shy to ask any of them, right? Yeah. Because um, you really do, you want that. Like the last thing you want is to to invest in a product that's going to get on your shelf that uh, is bad for pets, mm. you know, and then and then you're stuck, right? Like the reputation will follow you, right? Because, oh, yes. Um, people take it so seriously, right? So I mean, you get a yeah. recall on pet food and if you don't get that off the shelf quick enough, the, 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 pet, the pet parent now is they're signing up to get the alerts when, when the recalls happen. And if it's not off that shelf straight away, they'll make a judgment on you. They will. So you do, you've got to know your products. You've got to make sure it's safe and, and be on top of things. We were in a big grocery store and I saw a cat food in there that was, which I would never buy cat food or any food from a grocery store, but there was a recalled one on there and I had to tell them. I said, I was just want to let you know, that's been recalled for not, not, not a good reason. And I said, that needs to be off your shelves. And they had no idea. Yeah. And they, I haven't wondered about that. How do, how do grocery stores get these recalls? Yeah. Because they, they left that product on there. And I, I thought it was a bad move on their part. I didn't like that. I thought, Oh, they're not on top of it. Yeah. They don't care about pets is my immediate reaction. You know, it, it's not necessarily the case, but because we don't know how they get the information. But yeah, I think having make, to make sure that you can have confidence in the products you put on your shelves. Oh, yeah. Is important. I think the cannabis thing is going to be a big thing because, oh as gosh. as we know, there they may only be trace amounts that have no effect in a treat compared to another treat, say, for example. Uh, I think that's going to be a fair bit of research that I think the retailers will have to do themselves um, prior to getting to the show. There's going to be a lot to look at and they need to find the ones that are actually effective. And yeah, so I think that's going to be that's going to be really interesting like I think um watching that and seeing who's going to who's going to outright kind of um you know list that stuff and and get that stuff out um is going to be really interesting right because you're going to get a lot of folks that that do it that might not want to talk about it. Yeah. Um so it'll be it'll be interesting to see who breaks 
and and kind of goes after you know cannabis or or they call it CBD yes. right? because nobody wants to talk about it as cannabis in, right in stores already so who starts advertising CBD first will be very interesting to watch it will be very very interesting I'm looking at now uh, trying to find the best pet cannabis expert I can find now there are people that have been in the industry for a long time with pets but they don't have the um, you know they don't have the medical background behind them so I'm looking for right now I'm looking at a couple of different people that I want to bring on the show so that we can get people informed one thing I I will say I liked what my local station did Fox 5 was you know the minute that that was about to go legal they did a big segment on this is not for your pets there is a there is a product for pets, but this is not for your pets. And and they gave some tips on you know just make sure it's not available to your pets. So sometimes I get a little bit scared of those kind of things because I think they run run very quickly, and you have yeah. a hard time catching up uh, or even realizing the ramifications of something happening so fast. Uh, and so I I do feel like the the cannabis treats is going to be a little bit like that. Um, and we want people to be able to buy a quality product that works at the end of the day that meets regulations and it's not just we, we we're going to pick up on the yeah. trend but not actually provide a benefit through our product yeah. but it since it's trendy people yeah. will buy it I, I think finding you know that right information as and i'm going to be a part of that because i need to be able to put that information out to help people yeah. um but it's a big it's a big topic lots of people reaching out to me and asking about it and uh and whatever oh so my gosh it's going to be big for years to come, I think. I think it's yeah. it's going to be bigger than raw. It's going to be bigger than yeah. human grade quality. It's um, you know, and then and then it's going to be. It'd be interesting to see all the uses that we actually get into with this, right? It's a little bit like hemp that way, right? Like yeah. you can go so many different ways with this. So it'd be interesting to see how it goes. Um, I wanted to ask you as well. Um, yeah. Oh, it just went out my brain. Oh, so we talked. You talked about Amazon. Do you still recommend, mm-hmm. though, that any pet store has a very good online shopping experience? Do you, do you feel like yes. they need to choose, or you, or you agree they need that and that's a supporter? I mean, because the, there's a convenience yes. with that too that people enjoy. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's you. You have to think of it this way. So we're you know we're in this age where you have a store, but it it doesn't it actually doesn't matter anymore. So it doesn't matter whether you you view yourself as a dot com or a bricks and mortar. What you have to do now is be what we'd call multi-channel, right? So you really need to be, you need to have a strong bricks and mortar experience that that's what you are, but then you need to have your storefront online as well. Okay. So, so you almost don't want to think of it like a .com. You just want to make sure that what you've got online represents what you've got bricks and mortar. Yes. And then what's really important is if you've got that, the experience that you would get in store you have to be able to replicate that online. Yes. Um, you know, so you, you really just need to be in all places at all times, which sounds really intimidating, but it's not. Um, you just got to remember that that's who you are now. Um, and that, that, you know, it's almost like having you as a person, but then your, um, your Facebook profile, your Twitter profile, your Instagram, everything is the same, right? So you're always the same, whether you're virtually online or whether you're in person. Yeah. And so you want to think of your store in the same kind of regard. I, th- I think that's great advice. I, I've been on some websites belonging to brick and mortar stores and one, the the branding didn't even make sense. I would have thought I was looking at two different businesses. Right. Uh, some of them were so old in information or just very little information that I thought it's pointless. I would take the entire website down yes. because it wasn't serving a great purpose and it didn't match up to the brick and mortar experience as in, you know, I can walk in and get information on this, this and this and this. And then the site gave me nothing. Um, I went on a site recently and it's a fantastic store and I went onto their site and every link in the menu took me back to the homepage. (laughs) 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 Needless to say, get rid of it. If you were paying for it, save the money Um, or really, you know, zhuzh it up as we say and make like you say, make it consistent with all the other presence you have, whether it's virtual or actually in person. Do you recommend that people in retail actually have a bit of a face to their business. I actually don't like dealing with, uh, I don't like dealing with what I feel is anonymous businesses. I don't know who's behind them. I don't, I, I can't stand it. And I tell you, there's, there's a, a big trend in animal rescue for that as well, which I cannot stand. Mm-hmm. If I don't know who's running the rescue, 
I don't know who's behind this. I cannot make a connection. It makes it so difficult. And yeah, I love it when people have a profile of their pet, you know, their photo is their, you know, yeah. their profile picture. But when you send me a message, I can't connect. It's so, I find it so difficult. And I don't understand the anonymity that goes along with it. And I feel like some of the businesses do that. And I think the ones that I relate to the most are the people that say, hey, we had a great weekend for July the 4th in the store. And they show me pictures of them and their staff and the products and stuff. And I feel like I have a much better connection. Uh, do, you, do you see that as well with some of these um, businesses? Yeah, I think, I think um, you know, some, some businesses, uh, you you may not have that as much. So when you're in beauty or you're in health and health and wellness, that may or may not be the case, particularly in pet. I, I think you need a personality to go with it. You, you can't be, you could be a faceless organization, but then you'd be one of the big guys that nobody wants to shop at. Um, do you know? So yeah. you, you really, you know, if you're a retailer and you want to stand out, having personality that um, what we talked about for the brand side of having that unique story it's critical. Um, just it's equally as critical, if not more, for a retailer that you have a story of who you are, um, because that allows a consumer to know, hey, you know what, this this guy is different than Amazon. Um, there is a face to this um, organization, and then also for brands, they realize, hey, I I know who this is, so I know how I know how to, you know, this is this is Phil, and and he runs the store, and I know what Phil values now, so I can figure out how to work with Phil. Even if um, it's not just about selling my products in his store, maybe there's a charitable cause that I can tie into. Maybe there's something that he does on the side that I think would help my business, but also help his as well, right? So you want to be thinking like that all the time because it helps you. Um, it just helps you be different than kind of those big faceless corporations. Yeah, I mean, it's it's hor. It's I just don't like it at all. It just mm -hmm. I say I've, it's just a barrier there for me. A friend of mine, Kathy, and you'll probably get to meet her because she'll be at Super Zoo, but she has one of the best stores in town called Barking Dogs. And I kid you not, there are posts throughout the day about product, which is wonderful, and explaining what it does and why it's great. There is also a lot of posts with her and the staff. They have a birthday in there. They post a picture of them with a birthday cake. So there's this re very relatable, like, oh, I like these people. And I actually do because I know them well. But I like these people. And look how nice they are to the staff. And they got a little birthday thing in. And they show the dogs that just were groomed or they're having a little bath or getting some treats. And I, they, I feel like I've always said this about her store. I feel like it's a community. She's built a community, not just in the store, but online. Yeah. She's got people yeah. showing up. They just had a new baby. They didn't come, come in with the dog. They go, hey, I want to show you a new baby. And I, I, and I, I think had there been no faces, it would have been very difficult. I would never have that feeling that I get from, and I'm interested then to go to the page and see what's going on that day. Um, and, and, and as you said, what we do is we, we partner with her to raise money for animal rescue through pet ph photography that we do. We just did our July the 4th. And a, again, we do a lot of Facebook Live. She does it brings people into the store. They learn that she supports animal rescue, which is brilliant. And so it draws them in and they want to support. So I, I, I do like to know who I'm dealing with. This this whole be anonymous thing oh, it makes me crazy. You know, I get friend requests like that and it's a dog and it's a cat. And it's a hamster. <laughs> like, oh, you don't want me to go to your profile to figure out who the heck you are, surely, because I'm not going to. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> but but I, I do believe in, in, in people feeling very connected where they shop and the experiences that they have with the people that work there. I think it's really important. Um, I want to talk a little bit about influence, influences before we wrap up. Yeah. Now, of course, you work for Hubba. You've worked for everybody. I mean, you've worked for some huge <laughs> companies. And I say from soup to nuts, as we like to say, covering the whole gamut of anything to do with retail. Uh, but in particular, Hubba uh, has a pet retail uh, side to it. Um, tell people about Hubba because I think it's a unique concept that people are wrapping their heads around. I feel like I've not utilized it enough yet because I don't have much time, but I will. Uh, tell people about Hubba and and who who is it good for? <laughs> yeah, so so we're we're really a place for brands, buyers, and influencers to connect. So we we help people find other people really. So if you think about um, I'll give you an example. So there's a, there's a great leash, uh, company called K9 Bytes. Um, and so when K9 Bytes wanted more distribution, they needed to find retailers. They came into Hubba. 
they uh, they put in their products and and put themselves on on Hubba, and they were able to find uh, folks like um, Pup Joy um, or uh, there's a subscription service called uh, Surprise uh, Surprise Potty, uh, which does subscription boxes as well, and they were able to find them and and be able to do business with them, right? And so that's the sort of thing we do is is we help um, we help either a brand find retailers, we could help a brand you know in the same aspect like a Canine Bites. If they needed influencers, they could come in here and, and find an influencer who'd be able to talk about them um, and help them spread the good word. Uh, or, you know, or they could find another brand to work with, right? Um, so really, we're really this place where you can you can go to find connections that help you drive your business forward. Well, I think what it is, is when people sign up with Hubba, regardless of what you do, you know, whether it is retail brand or the influencer, mm. the people on there are wanting those relationships. So I think that makes it a little bit easier than reaching out sometimes to a brand and convincing them. Yeah. You should have me be your resident blogger, or it, they, yeah. those those things are kind of difficult when you're doing them solo. So I, I think the the good thing is that people know that whoever signed up, they want to be there and they want yeah. to connect. That's why they actually signed up. Um, the, the other thing I want to say, I'm, I just I'll put in a little plug for for Hubba Groups as well because that point you had about doing things solo, we know so many brands don't want to do it solo, and then you know what, like. Brands want to hear from Hubba, but they get tired of hearing from, you know, Hubbaneros or Hubbins like me. Uh, we, we have this area called groups and that allows brands to talk to other brands. Oh. Um, yeah, it's really neat. So it's, it's really, it's a gathering place for Hubba brands and you can jump in there and, uh, whether it's you or me or, or K9 Bites and they want to talk to Bowser Beer, maybe somebody has a question for, um, Pup Joy, they can jump into the, these groups. And be able to talk to their peers and not worry about, um, you know, and not worry about any of those, you know, like having to, oh, I need to do something on Hubba in order to ask a question of Hubba. No, this is just about you reaching out to other peers, other brands that are on Hubba or other retailers and be able to get crowdsourced answers to what you need, which is really cool. That's fantastic. Did you hear my Mm. dog then grumble? (laughs) <laughs> he's, like, he's hungry. He's like, yeah. <laughs> it was not me, I swear. It was not me. I've had no breakfast yet, but it was not me. Well, I love I love that because it is about talking to other, yeah. you know, whether it's retailers, brands, or influencers. And you can get so much information and insight, especially if you're new. If you're a brand new, if brand new in any of those areas, oh my gosh, the unknown. There's such a lot of unknowns. Yeah. And and I think sometimes with with sometimes I think with retailers and brands, there's very much I don't talk to them. They're the enemy, yeah. <laughs> kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, but I just find that when 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 there's just conversations going on, there's so much help for everybody. Uh, yeah. It's and it's it, that's a great part of the site, though. But as I say, I've not fully utilized it yet. But you know what, I am looking forward to is you and. Sam, I we'll have to get you in there for uh, for what we call office hours. You'll be able to talk to all these brands. Oh, I would. Uh, maybe talk- we can figure out how to do a broadcast inside of groups. I would love that to would do that. Amazing. Well, I know, yeah. and I know that what, what I'm looking forward to is when we do our live stream from Super yes, Zoo. That's going to be so amazing. <laughs> I'm so excited. Sam and me in the middle of the Super Zoo floor. That's going to be crazy. And if anyone's going, if anyone's going to porcupine, please bring it along. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that'll be hilarious. I think that'll be fantastic. That's going to be on July the fifth, twenty fifth. Everybody, July twenty fifth, one thirty p.m. Live from Super Zoo. As they, it will be live, so you never know what can happen. Yeah. Now you are also though you are also talking. You're doing an email marketing 101, convert your yes. followers to shoppers uh, yes. seminar. You're also doing an e-commerce one, how to utilize yes. uh, an e-commerce site and help you control your inventory and accelerate your growth. I'm assuming the classes are probably full by now. Is, is that the case? Yeah, they're they're pretty full. Yeah. Um, I don't I don't know how that works. I, we never kind of turn people away, so sometimes we get standing room only. But definitely come out. We're going to be talking about actually a lot of the stuff that you and I've talked about today in terms of how you leverage your network and being able to accelerate and how different things are now from even a year ago or two years ago. So Yeah, I mean, Facebook Live wasn't a thing. That wasn't even a thing that yeah. you know, now is a great way to market. It's just yeah. a great, I told a lot of rescues, you should be Facebook living from every adoption yeah. event. Yeah. Come on down. We're here until two, <laughs> you know. Oh my God. You know what? If they Facebook live, like people are defenseless. You know, the, the minute <laughs> they see the dog prancing around, it's gone. 
Yeah. They're going to take him home. They are. You know? They yeah. are absolutely going to do that. We brought yeah. a lot of joy, uh, not last week, the week before when we did our July the 4th uh, photo shoot. We showed all the dogs that came in and we show it all, warts and all, dogs jumping around and not sitting down for a photo. I mean, it's fun. Uh, but we we know it brought a lot of joy and a lot of awareness to what we do. And it was really fun. And y- y- there'll be more adoptions. People will just be more interested in in you know getting a dog you know, in, from a yeah. rescue than anything else because they see something like it's live it's real oh it's cute yeah. so so yeah i definitely i encourage a lot of people businesses I'm like, get on facebook live what are you doing mm. yeah. <laughs> it costs you nothing <laughs> because, oh, i don't true. like being on camera i'm like get used to it i'm very much like yeah. that anyway you know you don't yeah. have to do it once you'll be over it <laughs> yeah that's true so you fly in the sunday and then mm. what day do you leave I run away, so I'm I'm gonna be I'm running away on the red eye uh, Wednesday night. Wednesday night, um, which is the twenty yeah, sixth. Yeah, twenty sixth. Yeah. So yeah, so just, uh, so we need to plan something. We do. We need to. We need to get together. We need to maybe indulge in a little. Yeah. Of, I'm just of saying yes before. Stuff. I'm just it's, saying uh, yeah before you even say it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, yeah, I'm always up for so fun. fun. I am always yeah. up for fun. I tell you, always. Um, what I was going to say was, um, oh, what was I going to say about the time frame of being here? It just went out my brain. I've had one of those. I've had one of those weeks actually. It's been a crazy, crazy busy, yeah. busy week for Jim and I, and some late nights and stuff like that. And yeah, it'll fry your brain. <laughs> a few days of that. Uh, oh yes, that's what I want to talk about. Was uh, just before we wrap up is. Mm-hmm. Right now, I think a lot of people kind of ignore some of those emails that they get through SuperZoo, which are our brands reaching out and saying, hey, I see you're going to be at SuperZoo. Uh, Can we arrange a time to meet? And I think people should take full advantage of that and say, I love the the press room because I have everybody come and meet me in there. It makes my life so much easier. But I, I would encourage everybody to really take advantage of that. And if you're an influencer, you're a blogger, to reach out to the brands that you see on there that you're interested in and meet with them, make those appointments. They're valuable. They are so valuable. And when they're reaching out to you, don't ignore them. Don't ignore that. I mean, some of the brands reach out to me and I'm like, yeah, I don't think that's a great product. You know, yeah. I, I won't, I wouldn't waste their time meeting with yeah. them. But uh, when they're coming to you, it makes it so much easier. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, there's 2,500 booths, right? So oh, you, yeah, if you don't, <laughs> I know. if you don't plan, you, you've got problems, right? Like you are not, it, t- it takes like 20 minutes to walk across the floor, it let does. alone, you know, just to find the booth you're looking for. I wonder so, if we need a hoverboard you know? or something because. <laughs> You know, that would be the funnest thing, like a hoverboard or or one of those mall cop. What what are they called? The um, oh, yeah. Segways. Segways. Yes. Right. How amazing would that be? Oh, it'd make life so much easier. You look ridiculous on them, but it doesn't matter as long as it saves your feet. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) Absolutely. Well, Phil, this has been a really fantastic time to catch up and say helpful advice to people that are coming into SuperZoo. And it's all stuff that they can apply after SuperZoo. On how to reach out to to brands, retailers, influencers, work together because we've got the audiences. So, you know, why not kind of venture yeah. into that area? I know it's a bit scary for some people, but uh, once you've done it once, like I say, it's not always as scary. Um, yeah. And then we'll plan on doing a little something, something together. We've got the Facebook Live we're going to do. Uh, I know that anyone that goes into your um, your classes are going to be just thrilled with the information. And, so and and then here's try the thing. Not to put him to sleep. <laughs> Just take your porcupine with you. That'll keep him entertained. <laughs> and the thing is, do you work? Do you ever work one on one with with companies privately? Yes. Oh, wonderful! Oh, you, yeah, see? you see, I bet yeah. people just didn't even know that's available to them. <laughs> there's nothing better yeah. than some guidance. Uh, yeah, there's just yeah. a lot to be yeah. said for that, and it's definitely we're, a value. We're big fans of brands. Like we we love brands, we love retailers, and and we love to watch these guys succeed. Um, so if you if you ever ever need help, you, you head to hubba.com and find one of us, and we will do whatever we can to help. So we are definitely definitely trying to make the community come alive and and just be a thing. 
It's exciting yeah. times. It's really, mm-hmm. really exciting times. And uh, it's forever changing. There's a lot to get involved in. And yeah, we'll never get bored of pets. <laughs> no, definitely. <laughs> they're, they're here to stay. They are here to yeah. stay. Well, it's been brilliant talking to you today, today Phil. It's been brilliant. And we get to do it in person. I'm so excited. Yes. And, yes. We'll, and we'll, get so that, we'll get that Kelly along with us. And have you met, have you met our, um, oh, my gosh, why well, can't I remember anybody's names? Uh, pet Guide. <laughs> Pet Guide, Amy. What's Amy's last name, Jim? She's the editor of... of uh, Tokich. Tokich. She's no. the... She's the... Oh, not met her. She, she's got to be here. Okay. You're going, she's she's from, one Swedish. of your fellow Canucks. She's from Canada. Oh, really? She, she's the editor of the online community, PetGuide.com. Okay. One, okay. you're going to love her. Oh, such a scintillating personality. Oh, trust love me. It. Fun. I mean, she does a thing every year, and it's um, it's a little bit like a Where's Waldo kind of thing, but it's okay. she dresses like him. I don't know if she's going to do the same this year, but she basically <laughs> would go and steal product and have it all done on video and dress oh, like Waldo, amazing. hiding behind displays and stealing stuff. No and it, oh, it's fantastic! Fantastic right. way to to showcase products. Uh, for Pet Guide, she's hilarious, but she is oh, good it. at her stuff. She knows what she is doing. So I will definitely make sure we all get together with Amy as well. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, and tons of other people are coming in. I think we've got Kimberly uh, Morris Gaultier coming in from Keep the Tail Wagging. She is, she is leading the way as far as raw feeding uh, with her blog. She is brilliant, that girl. Absolutely brilliant. So she'll be in town as well. So yeah, we'll we'll bring bring all the personalities together. <laughs> will you be able? It. It'll will, be fun. Will you be able to cope? <laughs> <laughs> you might need some cannabis treats to get through it. <laughs> I know. We might. We might. Well, I will. I will see you in a in you know, a couple of weeks. It's not Promise. even. It's not even that really, Promise. is it? And uh, I promise you, I'll do my homework and I'll get on Hubba and start working it. <laughs> Yay. We love it. We love it. Thank you for having me on the show. This has been ama- it's always amazing. It's, a, I love it's going to be even guys. more when you actually show yeah. up in the flesh. I'm really happy about that. <laughs> well, have amazing, a, amazing. Have a great weekend, Phil, and okay, uh, I'll see you soon. All right. Bye, guys. <laughs> Bye, love. Well, everyone, I told you it'd, it'd be a lot in this show, a lot of information, and that's why we, we didn't put a lot of other stuff in the show because that's just probably the tip of the iceberg of, of what Phil can actually offer brands, retailers, and influencers. And in particular, if you are new in the industry, it is hard to navigate. There's so much going on. Uh, I guess the takeaway for Super Zoo would be if you're a brand, be unique in your approach and get people into your booth. If you're a retailer, again, look for unique products. And if you're an influencer, again, look for unique products that you know that pet parents would be very interested in. And as I say, it's a huge, huge event. So plan as you go uh, before you go there, have a plan in mind. It's one of those things you, you sometimes you get up and you say, I've got 20 things to do, but unless you actually wrote down the list of things you had to do and in order, you would probably not get anything done because you would just be overwhelmed just thinking about it. So have a plan in mind. Make sure you reach out to me because I'm going to be around. I'm going to be around in that, that press room and on the floor itself. And we've got the live that we're doing, the live stream with myself and Phil and Hubba on July 25th at 1.30 p.m. And that will be for an hour. And if you're lucky enough to get in Phil's classes, wonderful, wonderful. And now you know about them, you can go and sign up for them as well. Well, that's it, Jim, for the show. We've covered a lot. You didn't have to say much today, Jim. Well, uh, you were uh, engaged. Ex- excited. And, and that was good. And I was able to work all of my technical things today. <laughs> yeah. And plus, we changed the studio around a little bit. So we're kind of getting comfortable with that. Well, if you've liked today's show, we'd love for you to share it on your social media. And if you are listening to it on the app, that's super, super easy. Anything we talked about in this show will go up on our Facebook page. So if you're an influencer, a retailer, or a brand, you can sign up on hubbert.com and I will put Phil's links out so that you can communicate with him directly. He's big on Twitter, which I love. And uh, you will really like the site. It's very, very interesting and connecting people together. So remember, you can help an animal in need. Either rescue, adopt, donate, volunteer, or share their information. Rescue your next family member. Replace the word shop with adopt and be kind to all animals. Big thank you to Phil Chang of Hubba. 
pet retail expert. Now we've called him the king of pet retail. Great having him as a guest today. It was an absolute pleasure. Make sure you follow Hubba on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter as well. Thank you to Jim, since we had the heart attack at the beginning. <laughs> it just proves we are live. It proves it. And today you've been listening to Vegas Rock Dog Radio, where it's all about pets, people, and pop culture. I'm your host, Sam, the queen of rock and roll dogs. And always kiss your pets. Good morning and good night. And I'll see you next time. You've been listening to Vegas Rock Dog Radio. Pets, people, pop culture. Visit Vegas Rock Dog Radio for more information. Find us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And subscribe on iTunes and iHeartRadio. And remember, give your fur babies a big kiss from me, Sam, the queen of rock and roll dogs. You must not rely on the information in this broadcast from our hosts as an alternative to medical advice from your veterinarian. If you have any specific questions about a medical matter regarding your pets, you should consult your veterinarian or specialist.